Okay, so now that we have our controls wired up, we need to uh, go ahead and get the operating system set up and the uh, custom control mappings. So what I'm going to do is remote over to my computer in the lab. This is just a junk Windows 7 PC. I have an SD card in there already. I'm going to go ahead and format it. I'll uh, link all this stuff in the description. It's just a standard formatter. Uh, what I like about this one is is that it will resize all the partitions set up if there was any on there. Uh, just by going to Option, Format Size Adjustment, Setting to On. The default is off. You need to turn it on if you have used this for other Pi installations or whatever. But we're just going to do a quick flush on it. Make sure it's all ready. Okay. Then I'm going to load uh, Win32 Disk Imager to actually write the image to it. Now something I found that was a little confusing that I didn't understand at first until I read was the differences in the two RetroPie images. The RetroPie Image 1 and RetroPie Image 2. I'm going to use the RetroPie Image 1. Um, it is compatible with the uh, Raspberry Pi 1. Uh, B, B+, plus, uh, 2B+. Plus. I forget what the 2 is for, but we'll just use this. I'll have this linked in the description as well. There we go. Our drive is E. That is correct. We'll just double check it. Yep, that's our drive. I don't know why it says boot. doesn't matter. And then we write the image. What we're actually installing right now is the operating system and emulation station. Everything already pre-configured. Um, you can do it the manual way with just like a Raspberry and install. Uh, it just takes a while. This is already set up and ready to go for us, uh, short of configuring the controls. So we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, that will take a few minutes, so we'll come back when it's done. Let's pull it out, let's go live action, let's put it in the Pi and see what happens. Okay, going live action here, let's get the card out. Crappy lab PC. There it is. Just a little SD card. Okay, here's our bundle of pie crap. I'm just going to put the SD card in there. Alright, SD cards in. Let's power it up and make sure it's okay now. It should just boot right into Retro, RetroPie and Emulation Station, which is fine. That's what we want it to do. Okay, that's a good sign. Okay, now what I'm actually going to do here is I'm just going to get a couple things out of the way while we're here. I'm going to get the keyboard set up. Might as well. I'm just using the keyboard right now. Uh, GPIO controls will not work at this point. Uh, 
uh, these keys that I'm typing in are going to correspond to a file I'm going to edit shortly. I don't have any of these buttons. We'll have A, B, X, Y, maybe shoulder buttons, maybe. I'm going to look into some parts and see what's available. I don't have a lot of room to work with. Okay, so that's all good. Okay, cool. So that works. Uh, there's no ROMs or anything on here yet. Well, what I do want to go ahead and do, though, is get Wi-Fi working. Come here. I'm going to configure Wi-Fi. So just get a couple things out of the way here. Uh, this is just a Wi-Fi configuration screen. I'm selecting my access point. Typing in my password. hangs at the screen. There it goes. Alright, and we are connected. Okay, our IP is 142 on the Pi. Got to remember that. Get back. Let's get a couple other things out of the way. I think it was... Pi setup. Oh, yeah, we need to actually we need to do something else here first. We need to expand the file system. Here we go. This is option one. Expand the file system. Perfect. Uh, resizes the root partition. And we also need to To do some advanced options. Oh, the memory split. Need to change this from the default 64 to 512. This will give us uh, just more video memory for graphics. So it's splitting the memory between what the system will use versus what the GPU will use. And we need the overclock option. We're going to select PI2. Uh, we're going to overclock this to a thousand hertz. There we go. So, not sure how well any of those will show up. So, we did the expand file system option. We did that already. We came down here. We came down here to advanced options. Uh, we did the memory split. We have that set for 512. And then we went to overclock and selected the PI2 option. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and reboot. Yes. And again, this is going to reboot into uh, RetroPie emula Emulation Station. We're going to back out of that. Okay, let's go 
back to the configuration stuff, just get a few things out of the way. So we've got Wi-Fi configured. Uh, okay, let's just go to RetroPie setup real quick. Okay, what we're going to do here is actually go to the option three, which is setup configuration, we use post install. All right, uh, we'll get this out of the way. I do want my audio to come out over the headphone jack when I'm done with this. Uh, right now it's hooked up over HDMI, that's just for getting it up and running. The GameCon and DB9 drivers. At some point, I may want to make my own controls on top of the GPIO, so I'm just going to get this going. And it also forces um, a download of the most recent kernel update as well, so it doesn't hurt to have it. Okay, that's actually going to take that's going to take a little while there. Okay, so now that that's finished, uh, it's asking us if we want to see the README. I don't really care. Uh, no, I don't really care. Another README. This is just telling me about using. Uh, I can configure it for two controllers. I'm not going to do that now. Okay, we're back at the menu. And that should be it. Let's go ahead and hit escape. And let's do a reboot. All right, I need to get some files over to the Pi now for the next step, getting the controls configured and getting some ROMs on there. So we're going to cut back over to a computer screen real quick so I can show you how to do that. Okay, so the reason I wanted to get Wi-Fi up and running was so that we could transfer some files over to the Pi now. Uh, there is no front end on it, um, so we need to do this. Uh, essentially with uh, the SCP client here. I'll have a link for this in the description, but this is a free download. Uh, let me just go here, go to the download page. I got the portable executable, so I wouldn't have to install it. Just click that, uh, download it wherever you need to. Okay, I've already done that, so I'm just gonna close this. I saved mine to my desktop. Uh, that's this right here, already extracted. So we're gonna go ahead and run that. Now you need to know the IP of your Pi. Uh, I've already got this set up, so what you would do is you would go to SCP, type in the IP address. The default username is Pi. PI password is Raspberry. These are all defaults. And then log in. Okay. And on the right side here is the home directory of our Pi user. All right, so what I wanted to do here now is our Pi doesn't know that we have controls wired to the GPIO. Uh, so I'm going to follow this, uh, this, this guide right here, which I'll have linked in the description as well. And we're going to take this, we're going to take this and we're going to download a file and we're going to modify it. Basically, let me just scroll down here to where the file is. Uh, this just talks about hooking up uh, one of their products to do all this, which we're not going to do exactly. Uh, there's a section here. Here we go. <laughs> okay. All right. So what we need to do is download this file called Retro Game from GitHub. I uh, come over here, hit download zip. I've already done this, saving it to, the, I've saved mine to the desktop. And what we need to do, uh, we'll come back to this here. This is instructions on editing the file and modifying the GPIO. What this talks about is uh, when you get this transferred over to your Pi, you can use uh, the text editor Nano to edit this retro game C file. And down here around the line 111 are the GPIO mappings and we will change we'll leave these default we'll change the fire and jump buttons and we'll also add our additional controls as well uh, but we need to get those files over to the pi 
So like I said, I've already uh, downloaded and extracted that to this ARM folder here. There's all my files. Um, I deleted the pre uh, the packaged uh, retro game file it came with. Uh, we're going to let this create it, create its own. So I'm just going to transfer this over to the Pi. I'm going to transfer over this text file I made. just has a couple of commands we'll need for later for copy and pasting. And while we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and transfer a couple of ROMs for the systems as well. Get that out of the way. We're in what? Genesis. Let's get Earthworm Jim over. There he goes. We've got Blaster Master here for NES. And we got Super Nintendo. We'll fill these up later, but just for now. Okay. Alright, so we've got our files over there. Uh, let's, uh, let's cut over to live action and go ahead and modify that file and get it running. Uh, before we do that, though, let me just come back here. After you do this, what's important... Um, I'm gonna come down here a little bit after we get our uh, pin after we get our GPIOs mapped to our correct controls. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and make the file. So what's that's what you'll see when we go live action. Uh, we also need to add a rule. Uh, this is about how some of the applications use an SDL2 library for their controls, uh, which is the emulation station uh, apparently is not compatible. I, don't know how true that is, but it, again, it doesn't hurt to do it, so we're going to go ahead and create a rule as well. And what else do we have here? Uh, this is the rule we're going to enter after we create the rule file. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to run it. We're going to run the program and test our controls, and then we're going to also make it bootable right here by editing the boot file. And our command, our path will be a little bit different here, so we'll do all that when we get over there. And when we do the final reboots, our, all of our controls should be working. Okay, so now that we've transferred our files over to the Pi, we need to configure our GPIO driver file. Uh, so I'm going to change directories to that ARM folder. And what we want to do is edit the retrogame.c file. We're going to use nano to do that. Do sudo nano retro game dot c okay so what we need to do here is add our gpio and i'm going to i know left right up and down is correct i want to switch a and b the defaults There we go. And the key mappings as well. This is going to be X. There we go. And this is going to be 7. Okay, now what I want to do. Add a line. I'm going to add my enter and select keys. Which enter is on, or start and select. Start is on 8. Select is on 11. Start is on 8. Select is on 11. And I'm going to map start to the enter key. Give it a description. And we'll add another 
line for the select key. It should be enough to get us going here. We can always add more keys later. And I'm going to map select to the space key. that file. Let's exit that and let's do a make. We're going to compile that now with our control mappings. Perfect. Okay. And there's our compiled file. <laughs> compiled file. All right, what we need to do now is uh, make a few rules. Let's check our guide real quick. <clears throat> we need to make a, we need to make that bootable and we need to make a few rules as well. So I'm going to open up my arm tech my ARM text file. Okay, so let's do here. Alright, so it looks like we need to create a rule file and enter some rules. Alright. Okay, so let's create a rule file. That's sudo nano backslash etc slash udev slash rules dot d backs 10 dash whoops okay so we're going to create this file and we need to paste or input this command right here into that rules file Okay, and I believe it was Control R to insert from file. And what I'm going to do just to make this easy is get that right from my ARM text file. And I'm just going to delete what does not apply. Okay, then the rest of that does not apply. So all we're going to be left with is that single line command up at the top there. Okay, let's write that out. Okay, so we've created the rules. Now let's close it. Let's double check our ARM file. Or text file. Okay, so now we should have created the rule. Now we should be able to test our inputs. Uh, let's do that. Hope I always get my dots and slashes backwards. Oh, I need to get into the directory. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see if that works. Let me just pull this back here a little bit. Let's get the camera. So what I should see now is when I hit a button, we should get a corresponding press on the screen. And we are that's up, that's right, that's A, that's B, that's start, that's select, 
that's down and that's left. It's left, up, right, down, A, B, and select and start. Okay, so that works. That works. Okay, so and that Let's double check our file. Okay. All right, so now we need to make this file uh, bootable as well. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to make it bootable by editing. I'm assuming this file has to do with boot up processes, and we're going to add this line here. Our path is going to be our path is going to be different. I'm going to edit this file and add this path to it right here. Ours will be slightly different. Okay. Okay, and we want to come down here and add our path, which let me just double check that. Backslash home pie, okay, I got it, I got it. Here we go. Backslash home pi. That's the directory our retro game files in. And close it. There we go. And we'll save that. Oh, hit control C to cancel. I did the wrong one. Control O. Save it. Now exit. Okay, and if we double check it, that line should still be there. It is. Okay, uh, let's test this real quick. Oh, we need to reboot, I believe. Okay, we've done that. Yep, let's reboot. Okay, let me just get us back to the terminal here. Just to make sure. So here, our controls should also be working. And it does. Okay, that's a good sign. Do a live test here now. It's definitely working. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's working. Let's try a video game. I'm doing. I'm just using the controls right now.
All right, let's see. And it works. Nice. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. All right. Uh, so I'm sure there's some other emulators we got to get set up and additional configurations. But this is this is working for now. All right, cool. All right, we can move on to the next step. Starting putting this all together now. All right, well, that's the controls working. Thanks for watching.